It was an early June evening, the sky still pink and blue, the sea smells wafting through the windows as I sat in a folding chair on the second story of a fancy Italian restaurant. An older gentleman was conducting a short wedding ceremony, one mixed with rituals from the Christian, Jewish, and Apache traditions. And before me glowed the two celebrants, Patrick and Suzanne, one of the first couples to marry after meeting on the Internet dating site that I had helped to design, Chemistry.com. Patrick had been a journalist in New Orleans until he lost his job, his home, and all of his belongings to Hurricane Katrina in 2005. West he went, taking up residence with relatives in Los Angeles in February 2006. Days after settling in, he joined Chemistry.com and received his first recommended match, Suzanne, a lawyer living in La Jolla. That first night, they talked for three hours on the phone. They met the following weekend and fell passionately in love. So on a balmy evening during an April vacation together in Paris, Patrick took her to the top of the Eiffel Tower and proposed. The dazzled young woman grinned her yes. So here I sat in La Jolla, surrounded by some 50 of their friends and relatives on this festive wedding eve. I like being around people who are in love. They have a contagious energy. This force was palpable in the groom, the first to arrive for the nuptials. He burst into the room, filling it with his vivacious charm. Although we had never met, he greeted me warmly. We instantly struck up a conversation about the evolution of the English language, his experience as a journalist in some dangerous parts of Africa, and some of my past work on the brain chemistry of romantic love. Others soon arrived, and we took our places on the folding chairs facing a small bar strewn with lilies. Last came the bride. I was stunned when I saw her, a tiny, perfectly formed, porcelain-like doll with huge blue eyes and long auburn hair in soft ringlets wreathed in forget-me-nots. Like the mythological Helen, Suzanne had a face that could launch a thousand ships, and her vigor matched his. She was enraptured by her prince, gazing at him and grinning with uncontainable effervescence as she said, I do. Someone played a flute, the Apache poem was read, and as the bride and groom walked down the makeshift aisle between our seats, we blew bubbles at them from the little bottles left on our chairs. Then came the feast, Platters of cavatelli marinara, antipasto rustico, mussels, sausages, chicken fry diablo. A host of Italian favorites appeared at every table amid the balloons, confetti, and champagne as the disc jockey blasted out old tunes and we wildly danced. Patrick and Suzanne swirled among us, radiating joy. Love hopes all things, the Bible says. I hoped for Patrick and Suzanne but I also had a reason to be optimistic about their marriage. I knew some things about their personalities because both had taken my personality test, a series of questions I had devised to establish some basic things about a person's biological temperament. Both had told me their test results. And from these data, I was confident that Patrick's particular chemical profile would complement Suzanne's, creating a biological and psychological cocktail that could keep them captivated with each other for years. We have many inborn tendencies. Indeed, scientists now believe some 50% of the variations in human personality are associated with genetic factors. We inherit much of the fabric of our mind. But what is personality? Psychologists define it as that distinct cluster of thoughts and feelings that color all of a person's actions. Your personality is more than just your biology, of course. Personality is composed of two fundamentally different types of traits, those of character and those of temperament. Your character traits stem from your experiences, your childhood games, your parents' interests and values, how people in your community express love and hate, what relatives and friends regard as polite, dangerous, or exciting, how they worship, what they sing, when they laugh, what they do to make a living and relax. These and innumerable other cultural forces combine to build your unique set of character traits. The balance of your personality is your temperament, all of those biologically-based tendencies you have inherited traits that emerge in early childhood to produce your consistent patterns of feeling, thinking, and behaving. 
As the Spanish philosopher José Ortega y Gasset put it, I am plus my circumstances. Temperament is the I am, the foundation of who you are. Curiosity, creativity, novelty-seeking, compassion, cautiousness, competitiveness, to some degree you inherit these and many other aspects of your disposition. It was this part of the human spirit that I had examined in Patrick and Suzanne, their biological temperament.